and there was a sort of twinkle in Jung's eye that gave me the impression that he knew himself to be as just as much a villain as everybody else. There's a nice German word, Hintergedanke, which means a thought in the very far, far back of your mind. Jung had a Hintergedanke in the back of his mind, which showed, it showed in the twinkle in his eye, it showed that he knew and recognized what I've sometimes called the element of irreducible rascality in himself. And he knew it so strongly and so clearly and in a way so lovingly that he would not condemn the same thing in others and therefore would not be led into those thoughts, feelings and acts of violence towards others. To, which to grasp always, um, like, your own evil, so to speak. And uh, if you can come to grasp your own evil without uh, without condemning yourself, not, not that you give yourself a pass, but you're not condemning yourself. And if you can come to that place, then you're less likely, considerably less likely, to hate people because of their real and or perceived evils. This is what I've been struggling with. Uh, and uh, as I think I'm moving closer to the parts of anger that I control, this is where I'm getting at more and more of the place where I have to uh, focus. Well, subjectively, because I prefer not to be led by this anger. It's had a de what I would consider a detrimental effect on my life. So uh, I'm getting to what I think is the root. There are parts of uh, parts of my anger have to do with uh, physiological circumstances, but uh, plenty of my anger is rooted in in this. Is uh, it's it's hating an evil in someone. Subjective, of course, and subjective evil, but hating an evil in someone, and then basically deciding that person is entirely evil. <clears throat> Realizing, of course, and I know this well, I know that I am fully, not, not only am I capable of being evil subjectively, but I think some of the things that I've done, you guys probably would also say was evil. Uh, even just the thoughts that I have in my head, I have some pretty horrible, evil, evil, hideous thoughts. Um, and I know I'm going to do more evil, subjectively speaking. Um, but even with that, I, I, I'll give myself a pass for my selective evil, because I know that that evil is only a part of me. I have I have scotomas and shortcomings and areas of my life where I'm still led more by, by fear than anything else. And, you know, areas of my life in which my, my vanity, my need to be better than everyone else is, uh, motivates me to do something that under other circumstances I would never do. And, like, uh, yeah, the, 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 the selective, the selective isations of certain evils in us. How, how we've decided, or it's being decided for us, I'm not sure which, some combination thereof, which evils to focus on, which evils. If you do this particular evil, then this means you're entirely evil, and this particular evil over here, uh, it doesn't. It's like, you know, the Congress members. Anytime any Congress member stands up that uh, 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 cries about any injustice of any kind, especially when they talk about gun violence, fuck them up the ass. Because these fuckers, I mean, if anybody, if you could look, I mean, if you could look at anybody and say, you know, they might be just pretty much mostly evil, you know, by our subjective standards, whatever, but uh, they might be pretty much pretty much evil. Like, there are people like that. They're incredibly, I would believe, incredibly rare amounts of people. Like, you know, maybe less than 1% of us that we could put in that category. Because we're creating cultural realities in which uh, we are putting, depending on which camps we're in, we're, we may be putting as much as 90% of people or more into this fundamentally evil category because of a particular evil that they have in their lives. And so, uh, you know, if we get to decide, how, how is this stuff getting decided? Like, racism is now the number one evil. Racism, racism and bigotry are the number one evils. These are the number one evils. You can do almost anything. Right? Well, no, here, here we go. Let's see. Racism, bigotry, and any kind of... Uh, Unwanted sexual advances uh, from unwanted sexual advances to rape, whatever. So now we've decided that if you if you if you if you commit any of these particular evils, subjectively speaking, of course, even racism is a subjective evil. Um, you tell me, you show me the objective truth of why racism is evil. I mean, I can tell you subjectively for me, racism is definitely evil. Um, but uh, anyway, why 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 is racism the 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 most evil of evils? Why? I mean, and, but I mean, it's not it's it's not like unique in cultures. Obviously, to uh, you know, declare one evil is more evil than other evils and whatever. It's just interesting, you know, why why that right now? It's telling me something. I'm not sure exactly what, but. Uh, but one thing, I got, I got a little, I guess I, I got a little, I got a little diverged there because I got to, I've been really thinking about the, that, like, in cultures, why, why are certain values, like, why are certain, quote, unquote, evils more evil than other evils? Uh, not a new thought, obviously, but now I'm really focusing on it, especially right now in America. What's going on here? What, what, what is it telling me about uh, where the flow is going? <clears throat> but getting back to this, this to me is like, I, I, I believe that uh, the, the more that uh, people come to face their evils, in, in ways that, that they don't condemn them. Like, this is one of the reasons why I can't stand that uh, white guilt and white privilege shit. Because that, that creates this uh, unforgivable, unredeemable uh, paradigm that uh, mere, merely my existence, with little self-awareness as to whether my actions did or did not do this, that merely that condemns me to, uh, like, a second-class status pretty much for the rest of my life. 
you know, when they have their rallies and I want to be an ally, I got to sit in the back of the fucking bus. And I mean, I understand reasons why these things happen, but it's, it's one of these, even if they were right, if they were totally right, who the hell would want to sign up for that? Who would want to sign up for the unredemptive condemnation? Who would be able to be an ally to the unredemptive condemnation? And so whiteness becomes like an evil in and of itself, just whiteness. And, uh, yeah, <clears throat> it's pretty, pretty disturbing. But yeah, that, that's a real thing. Like there are people that when they talk about white guilt, when they talk about white privilege, that's exactly what they're talking about. There are plenty of people when they talk about white guilt, when they talk about white privilege, um, they have much more nuanced understandings and those folks, I've actually been able to talk to some folks and uh, really constructive conversations, but uh, the, 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 the smallest, loudest, shrillest, angriest group that can trigger in people the, 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 the most profound level of hate at another people and hate at another people automatically puts you in a better position than them. Uh, you, you can even hate your own, quote, people and still put yourself in a better position because, listen, in the hierarchy of shit, allies are definitely better than non-allies. So you still have a slight supremacist position to take uh, that appeals to your ego, to your, 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 your sense of being better than others, which we all have, which is, you know, itself is uh, there's a lot of useful reasons for having that trait. So you have here, like, there's some examinations that should take place about uh, America. <laughs> and it's, it's essentially, I mean, I, I, it is not hyperbole to say that America is, 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 is absolutely built on racism. Absolutely. I, I don't, I, I mean, I personally can't see how you can deny that. Um, so there's, there's all kinds of really difficult conversations to take place. And, uh, um, but those conversations are not going to happen because what's going to happen, what is happening is, is that, that, that small, but, but, you know, that small, uh, most aggressive group, the group that's, you know, that, that for them, white guilt and white privilege pretty much condemns all white people to uh, a second class status of, you know, in perpetuity, uh, or at least for a few generations, depending on who you talk to. There's some variation there. Uh, but they, they appeal to the, to the folks who, who I would say that uh, I guess I'll say the people who need to get the most affirmation that they are. Not, not just as good as others, but better than others are the people that I would, I would argue probably uh, unless there's some, you know, like if they're. Uh, a sociopath or something that's different, but uh, uh, people that ha have the capacity for empathy, okay, um, that most likely they really, really hate themselves. And so when you really hate yourself, okay? I mean, I understand this because I, I relate to this. I'm one of these people, man, and describing myself, I'm totally, totally susceptible to hate people because of this tendency in myself to need to feel better than others. <clears throat> so I understand it well. I understand I'm the target audience. Uh, but um, in this case, they're appealing to so many people who have, have, have actually experienced uh, uh, you know, racism in action, let's just say, or bigotry in action, or sexism in action, or, or uh, you know, uh, actual, like, real sexual inappropriateness that really should get somebody's head slammed on the wall. Uh, so there's going to be a, 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 I wouldn't even say the majority of, of the group uh, that would fit into this kind of category, but but a significant enough percentage that it would uh, that it would be a pretty vocal, active, and visible group that would that would rally to do things like, you know, hashtag uh, market assassinations, whatever, you know, whatever. I mean, to jump right in there and just, ah, man, exercise your supremacism over others, you know, like, like that's the thing. So, because we live in a world in which uh, we have spent almost, I mean, I don't know how much of, how many cultures have been built, even religions have been built with, with the, the un, unaware but totally core purpose of hiding evil from ourselves. Um, and how much power that has created for individuals who are overwhelmingly, subjectively speaking, evil in their actions. It's a, uh, I'm, I'm, I know I kind of weaved a little bit here, but uh, hopefully there's a thought there. And there's a two times speed, so we should be playing at two times speed, those of you who care. Anyway, just mulling over that. Uh, you know, I forgot to note in here the, the other side. The, uh, so what happens, on, on the one side you have a, a tiny uh, vocal militancy that expresses a slash and burn response to a racist reality. And then on the other side, uh, well, so that, and then that immediately appeals to another, well, much larger, but still minority sm uh, within that group, minority, a smaller, still a small group. But now this small group, it, it is much larger than the initial militant fringe, um, but this small group is, in, is, 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 is highly activist, highly motivated, and on, on, in, in multiple uh, factions, including this one, there are folks with deep pockets willing to make it easier for these activists to spend time doing activist type work. And so people on the, you know, within the, the white tribe, I guess you'll say, um, uh, I don't know if there is a white tribe, but, you know, in some people's minds, there is a white tribe. So for those folks, for the people that are in that white tribe, like that white tribe, especially them, the folks that, that mean something to them. Now, I'm not talking about the, the white supremacists. I'm, I'm talking about the, the white ex exist existentialists, I guess you could say. We want to exist. We white people want to exist. Now, it's not I want to exist. It's we white people, which is where I have my problem immediately. I don't know what we're attaching ourselves to a thing like race for. I mean, I can see within the political, within political structures, within higher political structures, I could definitely see the, 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 the real power advantage of, of clinging to a group, even if it's a race group in certain instances that, that would afford you some political protections and or uh, uh, advantages. <clears throat> but 
What happens then on the other side of the fence is that there is another vocal minority uh, and, uh, uh, well, another militant, uh, a tiny militant fringe that is calling calling on extreme uh, responses, of course, slash and burn responses to the perceived threat from the quote unquote other side. And the perceived threat, uh, now, now I, I do want to make it clear on both militant sides that the militants need not actually believe the shit they're spewing, but uh, most of them I would wager probably do. Uh, but the militants on the, on, on the white tribe side, well, they're going to do the same thing that the militants on the, uh, I don't know what tribe you would call that, because it's not, it's, not it's not a people of color tribe. It's a, it's a larger tribe. It has multiple races in it. It's a multiracial tribe. Um, uh, so whatever, whatever it's called, I don't know. But uh, so within this quote unquote white tribe, you have that. Now, now within the white, with, with, outside of the white tribe, there is another tribe that is also involved in this that uh, is not as receptive to the militant calls, but is not totally unreceptive either. And, and these are the, the Western civilizationists. Uh, and I understand Western civilization has a dog whistle for uh, actual white uh, supremacists. But there are, uh, I found, I, <laughs> there, are, there are tons and tons, an overwhelming majority of folks that are Western civilizationists, I believe, that. Uh, uh, that, that's their root. It's the, and they, and they, they mostly understand that Western civilization, if there is such a thing, that's another thing altogether, but you know, perception is reality. That for them, they understand that Western civilization is not a white thing. It's a multi-ethnic, multi-racial dimension uh, that's had numerous influences, including from the Far East, including, uh, I mean, I don't know, I mean, people may not be aware of the degrees to which Islam actually influenced the founding fathers, but, uh, but anyway, I mean, a lot of folks understand the multi-ethnic dimension of this thing called Western civilization, but still amongst that group, again, there is a small minority, just like, and those small minorities will be highly activists, and they will have people that will fund them. And so, what you get is there's this whole swath of people, overwhelming majorities of people, that have the capacity to talk to one another, but because of the fucking assholes, hating, and just just uh, just trying to imagine that their shit is better than the other guy's shit. Your evil is more evil than my fucking evil. Um, on this that swath, they, they can't even afford to try to have conversations because if they do, they're 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 they're, they're liable to have one of the other side like viciously go after their their their, their very means of making a living.